in this video, we... Alright, that was dumb. Anyway, in this video, we're going to look at six ways to design a corner base cabinet using the IKEA kitchen planner. Now, if you're a real keener, you would have already thought, Mark, there's only two base corner options in the IKEA section brand of cabinets. And you're absolutely right. But that does not mean there are only two ways to design a base corner using IKEA cabinets or any other cabinets for that matter. Let's jump into the IKEA kitchen planner and I'll show you these six ways to design a base corner cabinet. Now the first and easiest way to design a corner base using IKEA cabinets is just to select a corner base. And you would go into cabinets under base under corner and then you have a list of options. Now you only have a few options really. You have a 90 degree, 38 by 24 by 30 high corner base cabinet, which comes with a Lazy Susan, or you have a blind corner cabinet, and there's a few options for that. Our first and most easiest way to design a base corner is to select ourselves a corner base cabinet with a Lazy Susan. Select this cabinet, we can open it to show you this beautiful Lazy Susan that's on the inside and away you go. It doesn't get any easier than that, and for a lot of people, this will be the number one method to use, and it works very well. From here, you would just go ahead and add cabinets to each side of that to give yourself a nice little kitchen. We'll just add a couple here. So there is your base corner all set and ready to go. But you might not have room for a 38 inch by 38 inch corner base cabinet, and many people don't. You maybe have a smaller space, or the way your appliances are laid out, or for a number of other reasons, or maybe you just don't want one, you cannot have a corner base like this. So the number two way that you can design a base corner using IKEA cabinets is to also use a standard base corner cabinet called a blind corner. So go to base cabinets for corner, and you have corner base cabinets and these are called blind corner bases. Some of them have pullouts, some of them have shelves. I highly recommend that if you're going this way, you get something with a pullout because that cabinet can be fairly deep and difficult to access. Now you only have one size option when dealing with Ikea, so you have to select what they have. So for now, we're going to use this. It's a 47 by 26 by 30 inch high corner base cabinet. And with the Ikea planner, you just have to maneuver it into the wall and it'll snap into place for you. So if we zoom in on this section, this is called a blind. In other words, it's the part of the cabinet that you don't see. When you put a cabinet next to it, we'll borrow this cabinet from over here. It aligns just like that. It makes a nice 90 degree corner cabinet. You have a nice drawer bank or any other type of cabinet that you want here on the right side. And this cabinet, if we select it and open it, we'll see it has this beautiful accessory that pulls out and then you can tuck it away back on the inside of that cabinet. This is a pretty standard way to do a base corner if you're using Ikea or many other types of cabinet brands, whether stock or custom. Lots of people use these types of cabinets. Now a little heads up when you're looking at these on the kitchen planner, it says that these are 47 by 26 by 30. All the other cabinets in Ikea are 24 inches deep. Attached to the blind base corner is a two inch filler strip. They already attach it for you, or you have to attach it because you have to assemble it, but it's already part of the package and it makes this overall depth 26 inches. So that's the first two ways, the easiest ways to design base corners when you're using Ikea and many other brands as well. Just use the options they have available for you. And for most people, this is going to be fine. However, there are other ways to do base corners and it might be of interest to you to learn these so that in your future renovation, you could think maybe this would be something that I would want to do as well. Now, my favorite way to do a base corner, and if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I don't like them really at all. And I actually prefer blocking off base corners. And while some people call me a little bit crazy for doing that, it can be a good solution in the right circumstance. And so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Ikea has a great way to do this because they've already made for you a corner base filler that works perfectly for this scenario. You go to base cabinets and filler pieces and cover panels. And then down here, you have a freestanding filler piece for a base corner. This is a four inch by four inch corner filler and it's already set up for you in the Ikea kitchen planner. It's just two fillers on a 90 degree angle and they're attached. What this allows you to do is create a blocked off corner section with ease. Why would you do a blocked off corner? Well, there's a number of reasons why you might consider this as an option. Now, maybe you don't have enough room for a regular corner base. There could be a doorway in the way or some other obstacle. And so you need to create a corner but you don't have room for a regular cabinet. 
This allows you to use the space on either side of those fillers to better capacity. For instance, in this scenario, if you had a base corner cabinet and you only had room enough next to it for a small narrow cabinet, maybe 12 inches wide, and it's not something that you were really interested in having, you didn't want something narrow like that, and maybe you didn't have any other big drawer banks in that space, you can eliminate both the base corner and the narrow corner by blocking off that corner with this base corner filler and adding a larger drawer bank that suits your needs. Let's say you had room for a 24. So you can add a large drawer bank, and on the other side, we can put another large cabinet, maybe a 36. So what this allows you to do by blocking off the corner is make better use and better access of the space that's to the right or to the left of it. Now this drawer bank is much easier to use than digging around in a corner base regardless of whether or not it has an accessory like a Lazy Susan inside of it. Having a drawer bank like this makes it much easier to store the things that you need to store and have access to them with greater ease. And the fact that IKEA make this so easy for you to do is a real bonus and I don't know why they did it, because most people don't want to block off their corners, but they did it, and I think it's something you should pay attention to if you are thinking about designing a corner solution for your kitchen. This could be a great option. Now, similarly, you could do this with a blind cabinet as well. So instead of blocking that corner off, you could put a blind corner there so you still have access to that corner if you're worried about losing that space. But I've done my kitchen this way twice, absolutely love it, and I do it for many clients with no one ever complaining that they miss the space in the corner. So I would investigate this as an option if you're designing your kitchen. If you're interested in learning more about kitchen design, I have a workshop that's available on my website. There's a link to it in the description below. It breaks down my design philosophies and teaches you how to design a kitchen and how to draw a kitchen and the way I process kitchen design. It's a really valuable tool. People have loved it who have taken it and I encourage you to do so if you're interested in learning more about kitchen design. Now the fourth way to design a base corner is a little trickier, but it's definitely doable. Now, IKEA doesn't really want you doing this. Not that they don't want you doing this, but their program isn't set up for you really to do this. You have to kind of push the envelope a little bit, but it's not that difficult to do, and I'm gonna show you here right now. Sometimes you might want an angled corner cabinet, something that's 45 instead of a 90 degree. And while they don't have any cabinet like that, they do allow you to rotate cabinets and put them in corners. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this right now. First thing you need to do is select a cabinet and maybe you want drawers in the corner and so we'll pick a cabinet with drawers and we will make that cabinet maybe a really nice wide one, say 36 inches. And we'll do a two drawer like that. So it puts it on the plan for you and when you click and drag that, you can see it just snaps it in the corner. Next to that, there's this little icon that allows you to rotate the cabinet and if you select that, you can just turn the cabinet whichever way you want. I can turn it all the way 90 degrees. I can turn it back again. You sort of have to eyeball this to get it close to what you want, and that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. Once you get it close to a 45 degree angle, you can select it again and just tuck it back into that corner. Now what I suggest that you do from here is go into 2D mode, which gives you an overview of the floor plan. You can kind of see that that's not very perfect as an angle, and you can kind of correct it with a top-down view to get it closer to what you want until you're satisfied. I'm up close there now. So you can see I have a regular cabinet on a 45 degree angle, and I have it tucked into the corner. Now the problem is, is if I take another cabinet and put it up next to it, you can see that it overlaps and that's definitely not going to work. So the trick that you have to do here is two things. One, you need to add a filler on both sides of these cabinets and we'll do that right now by going to cabinets, down to filler pieces and selecting a freestanding filler piece for a base cabinet. This is going to be a filler strip. We're gonna select that filler strip and we're gonna put it against the wall here, slide it into place like that and we're gonna take another one and put it next to this cabinet. What we want to do is take our corner cabinet that's on a 45 and pull it out so it meets those fillers and it allows clearance for the drawers to open. You can select the cabinet and drag it out manually like this and sort of eyeball it till you get it close. You wanna take these fillers and slide them over to this cabinet. Now you can see here already that they don't really match up and it'll snap to the front. You don't want to do that. You want these to touch the wall. So we're going to select this cabinet again. We're going to move it a little bit till we get it close. And now you can see if we zoom in a little bit closer that we're getting close to this 
touching the right spot. And on this one here, we select it and drag. It's getting very close. Now to check this out, we can go back to 3D view and we can just go and kind of zoom in here. Now this does not need to be perfect in order for you to design this. The idea is to get it close because once you get it in place in your home, you'll use the fillers to adjust for any differences in the size of things. So you don't have to worry about getting it spot on, bang on exact using these fillers. In fact, you can go in and modify the sizes of these fillers. Right now they're three and seven eighths and I might wanna make mine three inches. And so I'll do that fairly easy by selecting them, hitting modify and then replacing the three and seven eighths with three inches, hitting return, and it makes it three inches for you. And there you have it. Now you can take these cabinets here that are side by side and move them into place. Now what Ikea does not do is fix the countertop so that it is all nice and beautiful and into the wall, but that's okay for the purposes of what you're trying to do. This will give you a close idea of what this will look like. Now you have this really nice 45 degree corner that you normally would not be able to do. Now you could put a sink in this cabinet, you could leave it as a drawer bank, you could use other size cabinets. The issue is, depending on the width of that cabinet, will determine how far you need to pull that cabinet out to meet the cabinets on the side. But the beauty of this is that you can play around with it to figure out what is the best size for you and what makes the most sense. Anytime you create an angle, you're going to waste some space. And yes, there is some wasted space when you do this. However, I'm not against wasting space, especially in a corner, because if the corner is more accessible and you can store just as much stuff this way as you could with a corner base cabinet, then why not do it this way? The fifth way of designing a corner base is to also take a regular cabinet on a 45 degree angle. But in this case, we do not want to pull it out from the wall for some reason, whatever reason, maybe it's design, maybe it's just because it has to be this way you have to have this cabinet right back to the wall. And so now you have this issue because these two cabinets on both sides and their fillers are going to overlap and you have maybe a little problem here. So there's a couple options with this that you can do. I'm gonna show you two of them here now. So this is option five and 5.5, I guess. The first thing you can do is take a shallow base cabinet and use that for your cabinet. Maybe you have a section of cabinets where you want a corner and you can't have regular depth cabinets for whatever reason. So you can tuck that base cabinet right to the back. It's a full depth, regular size cabinet on a 45 degree angle. And next to it, you can take a 15 inch deep base cabinet or even a wall cabinet for that matter, mounted on the base and put it up next to that. You'd use fillers as well to connect these two things together. But you can see here that we have this beautiful section that we can now create and even if you wanted to, you could pull this out from the wall a little bit. That'd be perfectly fine. You could put a panel on the end of that run if there was a run of cabinets to mask that it's pulled out from the wall. But you have this now narrow section of cabinets that would work really, really well in some scenarios. Now, on the other side, maybe you don't want narrow cabinets. So what you would do is go to cabinets, go to filler pieces. You're going to take a freestanding cover panel for a base cabinet. This is just a panel that you would cut to size and put in wherever you want. So we're gonna put this on our floor plan. You can see here, we're gonna bring it down here and we're gonna rotate it to be 45 degrees as well. A little trick to doing this is just put it up next to that cabinet and then rotate it. Now we have this panel that's on a 45 degree angle to match our cabinet. We can now pull it out from the wall and out from the cabinet. What it does is creates this base corner that's indented basically into the wall, it's gonna seem. And we're gonna slide this filler over to match and then we can just select this and drag it back till they meet and then we can pull this cabinet over. So what we've essentially done is inset a base corner into that corner, and this is what it will look like in 3D mode. Now, of course, you have to a little bit use your imagination here with the countertops because they're not gonna connect for you. Because basically the Ikea kitchen planner has no idea what you're trying to do. They're like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing here? You've got panels on the sides, you've got cabinets in the corner, they're inset, like, Mark, what's going on? That's fine. Use your imagination for the countertops. The idea is to show you the way to configure these cabinets. So here you have this run of cabinets. Maybe you have this here. And for whatever reason, you can only have a 15 inch deep cabinet. Now you have a way to do this corner where you still have a fully functional cabinet, nice big deep drawer bank, 
it's cornered like that. You have a section of cabinets here where maybe they're shallow, or you could do the same thing on the other side is put a panel there instead. Maybe we'll do that here now. We'll just duplicate our panel. So you can see now we have it this way where we have a cabinet that's completely inset. You have these panels, of course, I don't have them perfectly lined up, and that's fine for the purpose of this video right now. I just want to show you that this is how this can be done. Let's go into 2D mode here and we can see this. Uh, it's pretty bad. I'll fix it a little bit. We can just select that and make it a little better. There we go. And then select these cabinets. So what we've done here is created this base corner that's inset into the wall a little bit. Now this wastes the exact same amount of space as if you had pulled it out to the front, but it's just a different way of doing it, maybe a unique way of doing it. Maybe you like the look of it, but it also allows you to add a shallow depth cabinet on one side. This would work great if you had a shallow pantry unit that this was butting into, and you can also do that with IKEA cabinets by using wall cabinets and base cabinets to build yourself a pantry unit. So this is something that would definitely work uh, in some scenarios. And again, okay, one of the scenarios where this would actually work really well is when you have a corner window situation. So you have a 90 degree corner, you got windows in both sides on that corner. And when the cabinet is pulled out from the wall on a 45, it makes it really difficult to reach those windows. So if you're in a scenario where you have windows that you need to get access to, you want to open them easier, then by indenting that base like that, the way I'm doing it in this video, will allow you to get closer to the window. So that's one of the scenarios. I know you're thinking of when would I ever want to use this? Well, that's one of the ways that you could actually use this in a design situation to uh, give you better access to your windows. All right, back to the video. IKEA Kitchen Planner allows you to kind of play around with these ideas. If you like this kind of content and you want to see something like this but for wall cabinets, get this video to 200 likes and I'll make that one as well. Now the sixth way to do a corner is something that I run into uh, quite a bit of where I live and maybe you have seen this before as well, but in certain places and in older homes, they have what's called a pipe chase. There's a pipe going floor to ceiling in the corner of a kitchen that's normally boxed in with gyp rock, and it creates a challenge for creating a corner base cabinet, especially with modern kitchen design. In the olden days when cabinets were usually always custom built, they would build custom units to fit around these no problem at all. But now in modern times when we have kind of standard cabinets and we're buying off the shelf cabinets ready to assemble like Ikea or other brands, it can be challenging to create a cabinet for a corner like this. But we're gonna do one right now. The first thing we need to do is go back to define my space. I need to add an element to this kitchen called a structure and I'm just gonna take a box that's resizable. Now usually a box for a pipe chase would be approximately 12 inches by 12 inches, though it could be any size. But for this, we'll make it 12 inches by 12 inches. So this is gonna be 12 inches and its depth will be 12 inches. Now we'll move this box into our corner, go back to 3D mode. Now we have this pipe chase in our corner, what are we supposed to do now? Now the easiest thing to do is block this corner off, but you'll notice if you try to do that with the IKEA version, it won't let you put it in the corner because it has countertop on it and it won't let you get around the corner base. So we can go in, go up to cabinets, base, fillers, and we're gonna do a free standing filler piece right here, free standing filler piece. It just puts it on the floor plan for us. Rotate that around, we'll put that in our corner and we're going to duplicate that and we're gonna put it over on this side, on this wall. Now we basically have made ourselves a corner that is blocked off using two fillers, just like Ikea did. We can just put these into place, but this isn't the way I wanna show you. We already know how to do this. This is fairly easy to do, uh, but that is one thing you can do, and of course, you're not wasting as much space doing this because there's already something in that corner that's uh, taking up that space. So this is the easiest way to do that if you wanted to go for it, but I suggest we try something different. Okay, we're gonna to go to cabinets with, we'll go with drawers and we want to do something that's 15 inches deep and we'll do something that's 24 inches wide. Here we have some selection and you can see, we'll do this one here with three drawers and we're gonna just put this on our floor plan. And we're gonna line it up with the front of that cabinet. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna create a shallow corner base cabinet solution. I'm gonna use fillers here in a second. I'm gonna do this on both sides. We'll remove this cabinet for now, and we will duplicate this cabinet. 
and we're going to put it there. Yeah, we're going to pull it out to the front. We need to create a corner base filler. So we take a regular filler. We're going to move that over here. We're going to take this corner filler. And we're going to move this corner filler over here. So now we have our corner that's blocked off. We need to do that for the purposes of this. And we're going to take these cabinets and line them up to the front. So when I go back to 3D mode, you will see that I have this odd shaped selection of cabinets here. So just another thing you can do if you have pipes in the way, if you have things in the way in that corner that you can't use a regular corner base or regular full depth cabinet of any sort, use shallow corners. Now, of course, there's no reason in this corner why I couldn't just put a regular depth cabinet here, but I want to show you the option of using shallow base cabinets. Maybe this runs up the wall too far. Maybe there's other elements of plumbing from a sink to a dishwasher around a corner. There's lots of ways in which you would have a corner that's blocked up. And this allows you to think outside the box a little bit and create a corner that's very workable, but you don't need full depth cabinets for. And so you could create any type of corner you wanted here using shallow cabinets. And then when you open these cabinets, you know, you have full access to them. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of options here that you can use when trying to design something. So this is a great method. I think it allows you to, um, again, just come up with ideas for your kitchen. So that's six ways to design a corner base using IKEA cabinets. Hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of this from me in the future. We'll see you later.